Hello there and welcome to this vlog of September 2022. Before I get into today's video, just a quick channel update. Um, I'm currently in a bit of flux in the old um, scheme of my life in that I'm buying a house, selling a house, uh, my job is very busy and will only get even busier between now and the, uh, the last financial quarter. So my schedule over the next few months may be very thrown off. Um, been trying to kind of do that uh, Friday recording uh, every week but last week I failed because um, I got called away on a work thing um, and just couldn't sit down and record unfortunately so you may see some of that um, happening over the next few months I don't like doing that I do like to keep a, a regular regime but my um, you know just the way the cookie crumbles I'm afraid however once I'm kind of down in my new abode um, and we get into next year uh, things should start to settle down a lot more and at that point I should get back to some kind of regular routine. I think what's important to say though is like and because I have a lot of respect for Battletech I don't just want to keep making videos uh, where there's there's no real like structure or research behind them just to kind of keep putting them out so that's an important factor. Though I do think what I will try to do in, instead is focus on the the Kickstarter stuff because that's. I mean, I I'm not on Catalyst Games Labs um, like schedule releasing priority, unfortunately. So they don't give me any advance warning. So I find out when when you guys find out, and then if I see that and I'm around, I'll make like a quick fire video about it. That seems to be quite popular as well, and I certainly like doing them. Uh, I think just the way that I usually do it, where I'll just bring up like a spreadsheet and talk through what we're getting. You know, I th again, I could be wrong here, but I think people generally like that, not to necessarily see me speaking, but they've got a reference then. They can see it in kind of black and white in terms of what's coming out. And, you know, and I, I, I'm i pretty meticulous. So I'll put like the year date of mech release and the tonnage and whether it's jump capable and stuff like that. So it just gives you... You know, a little bit more data than than just kind of a, a random list that you'd find on Discord or you know wherever at Reddit, wherever else you get your BattleTech information. So I'll continue doing that going forward, and this video actually does absolutely kind of kick this off really with uh, speculation over the the next Kickstarter. And what I really want to focus on today, though, is the the kind of wider themes beyond themes. Sorry, beyond the um, the the mercenary Kickstarter that we are getting, they did that with the clan invasion, for sure. Like on the on the last um, wave two Kickstarter, because we got the what I'd call what I'd term like the core clan invasion, like mechs and storyline and things like that. But they did go beyond that quite a bit. For instance, they released quite a lot of mechs that, um, again, just off the top of my head here, but is it like the Cougar is a, a 3059 mech, so several years after the clan invasion, but that was in one of the, the clan box sets. So in terms of the mechs and what they were, you know, what they were bringing out, they, it was far wider in scope than, than just the clan invasion. I think they're going to um, do the same here as well. So the focus will be on... Um, you know, like the mercenary, um, the box set. So, and that obviously ties into all the vehicles that we're getting because mercenaries do love a vehicle. So that makes a lot of sense. But I think there are going to be some extra themes in there as well. And I think one important point to say, and this comes directly from um, the mouth of Catalyst, really, I've heard at least one of the kind of top people that I say this, that they didn't really want to do another Kickstarter around an era. So they weren't just going to call the next Kickstarter Fedcom Civil War. Um, that's proven true. They're not. They're going to call it the Mercenary Kickstarter. But I think in terms of a time frame, they are now going to kind of naturally go into the 3060s, which is when the, um, when the Fedcom Civil War kicks off. There are other things as well that can that they can cherry pick and say, oh, well, we can focus on that and create like a box set for that. A good example would be um, something around Operation Bulldog. So you could do like a bespoke, you know, lance of, of or a, you know, even like a demi company uh, of mechs or vehicles that are focused on the uh, on Operation Bulldog and basically the annihilation of uh, Clan Smoke Jaguar. I don't think they'll go in that direction though. I think that they've they've almost given a signal of where they are going to go, which I think is very interesting. Uh, be, again, beyond the mercenaries, and I think we're going to get something around the word of Blake. 
Um, now the word of Blake, if you know your battle tech, you'll know he's a really quite a toxic <laughs> like entity within the battle tech universe. It's very divisive because eventually the word of Blake go on to create the um, or cause the the jihad era of battle tech, and that is generally seen as one of the like worst storylines that they ever did and it nearly pretty much killed the the entire franchise and even to this day you'll still get like old men like me complaining about it and saying it I, it, it turned me off so much I never kind of went beyond it within the, the battle tech narrative which is a shame but ultimately I don't direct any of that heat really towards Word of Blake like I think the the idea of Word of Blake which is like a cult within Comstar is actually a sound idea. And if you read back through the old 80s um, like books, you'll see that that idea of what the word uh, word of Blake become is like omnipresent, much as the clans are. You just have to kind of read between the lines. But it's very obvious that they were planning the clan invasion and something with the word of Blake from like, like day one in terms of the storylines. Where I think it's problematic though is how the you know within the execution of the jihad, which the word of Blake was so uh, like central to, it was such a car crash really that it's just had a forever impact on that, um, you know, on that cult within Comstar, um, which is a shame because I think if you kind of in the thirty fifties when the word of Blake attacked Terror, those story storylines are fine. Like it's it's like a splinter group of Comstar that. You know, obviously born in like the the piece of Tukid, and you know it's they're very radical, and they've got this the truth of Blake, or well, word of Blake. You know where they, you know they they're trying to kind of um, put some kind of manifest destiny on what what Comstar should be doing in regards to their overall place within the uh, like this reborn Star League. So there's like a big power play going off with the word of uh, Blake. And that's interesting. I mean, I, like I said, the stuff that I read about Word of Blake before the, the Jihad, so this has been years ago, like back in the 90s, was all very typical to what you'd expect from Comstar and like the Battletech universe. And I think, and again, just from, this is maybe me putting two and two together and getting 74, but I think from the mechs that we've had announced or kind of semi-announced, I think we're going to get a Word of Blake box set, much like we got the, the Comstar box sets in Wave 2. Those, to me, were actually the two best box sets that they did. I thought they were both fantastic. They did, um, just trying to remember from memory the, the names, it was the Level 2 uh, Command Demi Company. I, don't th I call it a Demi Company. I think they just called it like a Lance Pack. Um, and then there was the Battle Lance pack as well, and it was six mechs. Um, and they were both fantastic. You got mechs like the Guillotine, the King Crab, the Black Knight, the Mongoose, the Mercury, the Sentinel, uh, amongst others. It was uh, just a, a very good value box set. And um, if you if you like that era, and you kind of, especially if you like bought the Tukiid book, of which there's a poster up there. Um, so if you bought that book with that um, that Black Knight um, Clan Buster variant there on the front, you can actually get a lot of those mechs into those forces because they were very like Comstar mechs. But there were only 12 of them. And Comstar, if you know your, your Battletech law, they were kind of harbouring back a lot of mechs that only kind of saw light of day again um, in the like during the clan invasion. Um Things like the Mercury, like the Mercury, I think was generally seen as like a lost mech. Some weren't like that. Like the Mongoose, I think the Three Worlds League had the uh, one of the factories that like pumped out the Mongoose, so you can still find the Mongoose within like Three Worlds League forces in the Succession War era. Although it will be the no doubt it will be the Succession War Junker version that they are using. Comstar though came back and were like, yeah, we're gonna you know we're gonna go to war at Tukey and we're gonna bring all these amazing mechs back. But we only got 12 of them. And from what I can see, and this is just, you know, anecdotal from me, but Comstar is a very, very popular force to play uh, within the like the wider Battletech community, which I understand because they are pretty cool. You know, the mechs are all in white, which is, you know, you've got to learn how to paint white. It's not the easiest thing to do. But the mechs are great. And they really kind of, they do go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the, with the clan mechs during the clan invasion because they generally have better numbers 
and all those mechs have been specced up. Well, maybe not all of them, but the vast majority have got like double heat sinks and ferrofibrous armour. And like the, the Black Knight that you can see, keep pointing the wrong way, that you can see up there, uh, it's got a big sword in its left hand. So and that the clans really don't like it up them, either in terms of like melee combat. So that's, you know, little things like that just make the like Comstar or Com Guard forces cool. Um, now, I think we're going to almost get like a second part of that. And the only way that they can really go is within really to do the word of Blake. And the reason I think this is because we have had three mechs confirmed now, or at least the designs have been confirmed, but they've not confirmed the box sets. But I think, you know, Catalyst Game Labs are doing this as a bit of a surprise, which I'm going to try and get in front of here. Because if you go through the mechs that we have a suspicion that we're going to get, there are, th there are three. I'm just going to be looking over here because I've got all of my notes over on this screen. Uh, but we've got the Grand Crusader. Uh, the Raijin and the Nexus, or the it's also known as the uh, the Star Python as well. Uh, these are all mechs that you affiliate with the uh, the Word of Blake. So, for instance, in this, the uh, the Grand Crusader is a thirty fifty three mech, and the Word of Blake is it's been, well, the concept of the Word of Blake's around for a long time, but the kind of entity that is a militaristic organization with a power play going on kind of comes around during the the post of uh, sorry the Peace of Tukid. All these mechs, the Grand Crusader uh, 3053, uh, the Raijin 3052 and the Nexus 3055 are all in that like that zonal period between uh, the, the end of the uh, the clan invasion and the, the time that the Word of Blake invade Terra, which I want to say is 3057 off the top of my head. So, you know, they're kind of building their armies at this time and designing these new mechs. They're not all new. Um, some of them are like chassis built off um, other mechs that, you know, were created during like the Star League era, things like that. I mean, you very rarely get, well, you, know, you do get new mechs, obviously, but like for something like the Word of Blake or Comstar, they've obviously got, they've got knowledge that other, you know, forces don't have. So it's much easier for them to redesign that mech that maybe only got prototyped back in, you know, the Star League era. Whereas, like, if you're looking at, like, the Fed Sons or the Capellans, who are quite good at creating new mechs, even, like, before the clan invasion, they were kind of building from scratch and trying to kind of, you know... Like, they, there were some there were some designs that they'd found that were lost for mechs or whatever, but they, generally speaking, things like the Hatchet Man, for instance, that's kind of just born out of the... Um, well, it's actually Team um, uh, Bonsai. Is team, team Bonsai, yeah, I think they're the ones who are kind of involved in, in designing the Hatchet Man. So it's kind of the genius of the, the end of the Succession Wars when the Renaissance starts to, to come upon us. But generally speaking, you know, the Comstar, the Word of Blake, the Comguards, they have access to knowledge that the other powers don't have. So it's much easier for them to get that chassis uh, from back in the day and then just make it into something that fits into their force plans. And you get that with all three of those mechs. Now, if you look at it like this, like in the last Kickstarter, um, which I wasn't anything like as into this, you know, to Battletech then or getting back into it than I am now. But I, I, I've kind of heard like some of the mechs, like the, the Comstar packs. I don't think they announced that, you know, like early on in the day. It was something where either it was done as a, an unlock on the, uh, which I, I can't remember, it might have been, it might have been an unlock on the uh, on the Kickstarter when it got over a certain amount. Or they may have had that in the works for a while and announced it. I just can't remember. But my point is that a lot of the mechs that they were bringing out were just kind of, oh, yeah, by the way, we're doing this as well. And I think we're going to get that when they announce the next Kickstarter. And the ones that they have announced but, but don't have a box set for, uh, I've actually done a video on, on the box sets already. Um, I think that was about four or five weeks ago. So if you want to kind of know exactly what we're getting with most of the box sets for the vehicles and the mechs, you can go find that one. Um, this though, we did just see that there was some like rando mechs just left over which people couldn't place, and those three mechs to me are the tell. Because if you actually just go and look at the the history for those mechs, and then you kind of put two and two together with the, the Comstar boxes previously, I think we're going to get at least one, but maybe two. Word of Blake, uh, what I would call demi companies, which is uh, a six uh, mech force. And that again, it, it acts as a nice part too to what they were doing on the on the last Kickstarter, but it also gives them a chance to introduce some mechs that 
we all desperately want, or I certainly want, um, that are affiliated to Comstar but just didn't make it into those Congard uh, box sets. The best example of which is the Kintaro. Uh, I was quite shocked that the Kintaro never got into that box set. Maybe, you know, I mean, I'm sure Catalyst Games will have a, have a long-term plan on this. But there are certain mechs that I think people desperately want um, but have not been announced. Kintaro is certainly one of them. The other one, which is now being fixed, is the Vindicator. Uh, that's in the new uh, beginner's box set, which is available now. Um, and although, again, to back, to spend whatever it is, $20, $25, 20, £25 pounds on a box just for one max, probably a bit excessive. I mean, I've done that, but, you know, I don't expect everyone to be as excessive as I am. They may bring the Vindicator and put it into a, another box set. I hope they do because that's a mech that I love. Um, but I think like there is certain they've, they've fixed it with a Vindicator. I think the other glaring omission from the last Kickstarter and there are several was the the Mauler. Love to see the Mauler in one of these box sets. Certainly won't be in the the Word of Blake um, box set though because that's very much like a well it's a mech that was designed by the uh, Draconis Combine and there were problems with it. And then the um, the Fedcom, or I think it was more the Lyrans, kind of got hold of it and loved it and fixed the problems with it. And then they kind of pushed it as one of their like big uh, mechs over the uh, the clan invasion. And so it's kind of, you know, it's, it's a history of, a, sorry, it's a mech with a lot of history and a lot of interest around it. But And I'm hoping that they do it or at least have it as like a, a goal, like an unlock goal on the next Kickstarter. So, you know, if we go over $500,000 or whatever, we'll make them all a... And you can all get a free mauler in your, you know, box sets or whatever, or your, you know, your, your, um, sorry, your Kickstarter packs. So, I mean, ultimately, as I say, I think we're probably going to see a bit of a, um, like similar to the last Kickstarter, but different in that it's obviously going to progress the, you know, the focus on into the 3050s. And I think the word of Blake's going to be the best way for them to do that, especially to kind of tidy up some of those classic mechs that a lot of people want to see. Um, I'd be shocked if they did it as a Lance pack. I think it has to be as a Demi company just to kind of keep into the same like line as what the, the old Com, God, said they're not that old, but the Com Guard box sets, what they looked like. Um, so yeah, I mean, if we could get, if you could get like a, a Shogun, uh, a Raijun, a Nexus, a Kintaro, and then two other mechs that, you know, that you can that you can choose from in and around that area, that would be superb. Um, the other mechs that we've got, which are, I suppose, slightly less interesting really, but, well, say one of them's not, one of them is very interesting, but the one that's, I suppose, not as interesting is the Shogun. Uh, the Shogun's a 3029 mech. I've always associated the Shogun with the Wolf's Dragoons, so we may get another Wolf's Dragoons box set, which I don't think would be like the most um, unusual thing because we've already had a box, uh, sorry, a Wolf's Dragoons box set. It was very, it was kind of a late era one though. You know, it was one that he had like a mad uh, cat in there, for instance. So it was definitely you know post uh, clan invasion, obviously. We might like the Shogun, given it's a 3029, maybe that will kind of fall more in line with the, um, if they do this, if they use the Shogun for this, it may be like a regular land set for the Wolf's Dragoons, kind of maybe in the 3020s, 3030s, and then they can put three more mechs in there. I think that would be like really interesting to do. I think the Wolf Dragoons kind of deserve that as well, because they are such a huge like force within Battletech, like absolutely massive especially um in the, the areas that i play they, they are so central to everything um in terms of the like the narrative that i don't think it's it's unjustifiable for for that mercenary um like army to have a couple of uh, box sets maybe like one clan invasion and then one like succession war era i think that would be quite a good thing to do um, the other one which I've seen touted around, but I've had no, I've seen no confirmation of this outside of just speculation. I think everything else everything else I've mentioned thus far has very much been like um, confirmation in regards. We've seen designs for it, and if they can fit it in there, they will do. Again, not one hundred percent for sure, but you know, I'd say ninety percent sure that the mechs I've spoken about on this vlog we're going to get the. Other ones, 
Oh, so apart from the marble, that's completely speculation. Um, but we know we're getting the Vindicator, and the other ones there we've actually seen like designs for already. The other ones, the 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 mechs that we've that I, on my previous video and everything that we got from Gen Con, we absolutely know we're going to get those. Like they've already been allocated into box sets. They've got like the three D three D renders of them, so we know what they look like. So you know those are. I mean, you can never be a hundred percent confirmed obviously but they are 99 percent confirmed i mean they can still change a few things but i don't think they'll just trash them they might move them in different box sets or whatever but we we know we're getting those really but the the ones that i've talked about thus far on here are still a bit speculative but one that's this is like the app this uber speculative one here is the merlin uh the merlin is a a really unusual mech in that it was, I think it's like the first of, it's like the first mech that gets remade, you know, for like centuries. And it's a mech that comes, I think it's 30 or nine, no, sorry, 30, 10, uh, that it gets designed and, and, and created. It's a mech that, funnily enough, and this is where I think this is quite an interesting one, it's very much a periphery mech. That's not to say that like the Inner Sphere don't, have access to it or you know use it or whatever else but if you kind of go to the force list you see that it's like peppered throughout like the magistry of canopus uh, the taurians i think the mercenaries use it quite a bit as well i've seen it in like the uh like the early uh wolf dragoons forces if you go on like the master unit list it's certainly on there oh no sorry no not the wolf dragoons it's the calhounds sorry um so you know you you do get it like popping up if they do the Merlin, though, I think that's very interesting because that is, again, it's it's a mech that I completely associate with the periphery. I, again, I could be wrong in that. I just it's if you say Merlin to me as a mech, I'm like, oh, it's a periphery mech. I could be again. Who knows? But I that's kind of my feeling on it. And to that end, are we going to therefore see maybe a bit of a branching out into? Um, into those kind of unusual mechs that maybe the periphery either like design or have like an abundance of. Um, you get that in certain uh, forces in the periphery. It's like the Taurians, for instance. The Taurians have quite a lot of Thunderbolts, um, which is, you know, it's I mean, it's a wonderful mech, but it's just something, why, like, I don't know why. I mean, it's something that the Taurians obviously have like a factory for and keep, um, like pumping them out you see it often within like taurian forces so you know they've already like i'm not saying just distinctly that like the taurians are, just have exclusivity to the the thunderbolt they don't that's actually, it's actually quite a, um, a standard mech that you find throughout the inner sphere but generally speaking it's just like they might be doing something or they they might be tinkering with things to start focusing a little bit more on periphery as opposed to you know like the the core in a sphere or the clans like i think there is room to go there and i think you know you could for instance just following that thought off from the taurian um thunderbolt you could do like a taurian box set for instance and give it like their own unique sculpts and you know maybe there are like variants of the the thunderbolt that they have uh, i'm not saying they're going to do that in this kickstarter in fact i think that would be uh, like probably a bridge too far for them because they're just focusing on the mercenary side of it. But just interesting that we're getting, um, um, or we we think we might be getting a mech that is so associated with periphery forces. Again, though, that to me is a. Uh, even if we get that mech, I would rank it about fifty fifty because I've just seen speculation about it on like message boards. If we do though, it's interesting. So I'm just I'm what I'm trying to say is here. I'm struggling to see where the Merlin fits into like the mercenary packs um, or kind of the, the wider themes of what they're doing. So it's certainly not a mech that like the like the Word of Blake could be using. Uh, the Word of Blake designed their own mechs really uh, or used those older mechs from the Star League and the, the Merlin's like completely separate to that. It's a mech that was created in 3010 um, in like a new wave of, of mechs coming around. So yeah, I'm just, that's kind of my you know, my two cents worth thought on, on what they're going to do in this next Kickstarter, because I think it's it's open to speculation, given that we have we don't know everything just yet, but we should, I think, I'll put it this way, I think we'll get some surprises. I think we'll get some, like, um, some force packs and some data, some, sorry, some, um, like, mechs that come around that will surprise us quite a little bit. Um I just I feel like they've got a lot of goodwill in the bank and they've you know 
given that this is like an interest-free loan that they're getting basically and they know that it's going to work and they know that people will back it i think they can be more creative is what i'm trying to say so i think and they did a lot of that testing i think in the last kickstarter like doing the um the, the com guard box sets i think that was something that I'm not saying it's a risk but when you've got like six mechs in a package and it's a bigger package and it's elaborate and it's, it's quite a niche thing in battletech as well it's not like something you know from like car 3025 era that like anyone who knows anything about Battletech knows like mechs like the Catapult, right? But they don't necessarily know mechs like the Mercury or the Mongoose. Um, so it's a bit more of a risk, but it seems to have paid off. So I think we'll, we'll start to get more obscure, random things being thrown at us. And hopefully it will all be in the, the unlock system um, of the Kickstarter, which is going to be really fun to see when they actually announce it. Um they've got so they've got so many directions to take i mean will we see infantry for instance uh we i think we absolutely know that we're going to go although we've not seen any of the designs for it to my knowledge we absolutely know we're going to get in a sphere battle armor um the kind of the theory is that that's going to come in the mercenary box set that will be kind of the you know the cornerstone of the next kickstarter um you might get like two uh squads of it in there I also imagine they'll do like their own box set for it, like the uh, the elementals got in the in the last uh, clan invasion um, Kickstarter. But will we get regular infantry? Um, just a, a quick thought on that one, because a lot of people love infantry. In fact, I really enjoy playing with infantry. They, they they add a real extra dimension to your game. But I think if you'd have asked me two years ago, I would have said yes, they need to do it because the infantry, the six millimeter infantry for BattleTech, the old. Um, like metal sculpts of it are just they're unusable they're absolutely awful um i had some of them and just bend them because they were just so terrible but recently i have found um a, a company it's, it's actually out poppleton way which is in my neck of the woods it's in yorkshire somewhere i think um they have a um there's a studio there on etsy who are like churning out lots of six millimeter infantry and they are absolutely brilliant. Like they're quite, they're quite chunky. Like they st they're still to scale, but like you know, it's like armored, rando sci-fi dudes. And you can get different ones. So you can get ones that have like rocket launchers and automatic weapons, or ones with flags, or ones with swords. And you know, like like a it's like a commander with a regimental sword or something like that. Um, and I they're absolutely amazing. They all come on these like tiny little round bases. So you can just glue them like uh, individually onto a little um, like base, um, but they they paint up very well because they're quite chunky, and I kind of, I really struggle now to think that Catalyst could do anything better than what is on the three D like market for for infantry, just because it's so it's impossible to license infantry right like you you can't just say okay well you you know. Like a mech you can license. Like if somebody is 3D prints a catapult mech and they call it a catapult, or even if they call it a, I don't know, something else, but it still looks like a catapult, potentially they can sue you. You know, Catalyst Games Labs or Tops can sue you for copyright infringement. But you can't do that with 6mm infantry because it's just a little person with uh, a gun. And, you, have, you know, if you want to paint it in house Davian colours, that's up to you. But you can't sue people for just making random six millimeter infantry that don't really have any uh, detail on, on them anyway because they are too small. So that would be the first kind of question to me on a business standpoint for them, which would be, well, what's the point? Because we can't really trademark it anyway. It's also, I imagine it's quite fiddly to do. Like, it, I mean, just in terms of how Catalyst are now making um like their box sets and they don't like anything to be um well there is a little bit of construction in them so like if you've got the um if you get the the special edition like limited mech releases that have been coming out over the last few months um, so they did like the um the the mad cat um tc variant you can get them in a little pack and you have to build them that's fine but generally speaking like the lance force packs they all just come like pre-assembled the vehicles are coming pre-assembled um, and I think it would be a bit of a stretch for them to say, okay, well, we'll do infantry and now like they all come on sprues that you've got to cut out because that's what you'd really have to do. I mean, I don't know how you'd, how it'd be such a, an effort to make three, uh, sorry, to make, yeah, three-dimensional light infantry on a hex that's all glued on there and it's got the detail. I mean, I don't, 
I just don't know how they do it. It's very easy to do with a mech because it's got like, there's the chassis and the legs and then there are two arms and it just sticks to it. So it's quite easy at their side to, to make. But how do you do that for a, you, you know, do you just get the, do you meld the base and the, the units together? So then you can't do any kind of repositioning with a, it's just, it's complex. And I just, it's not something I'd be thinking about doing personally if I were them, but you never know. So I think instead what we'll get is we'll just get much more kind of focused towards like, oh, if you if, if we get X amount of money, we'll make this vehicle or this mech or do this force pack. Um, another thing they might do, and we've seen it, we saw it once, we, and it's kind of terrain, kind of, a little bit. Uh, in the last Kickstarter, there was, if you bought in at a certain level, you got one of the, um, like the drop ships, like a big spheroid uh, drop ship. We they might do something like that. I mean, they might do like um like I don't know maybe like a limited edition or just for Kickstarter leopards or maybe even some like terrain you know some specific terrain maybe like a HPG um like network radar or something like that you know something specific to BattleTech. But I think generally speaking, again, kind of ties in line with the infantry thing in regards. Do they want to do it because there are going to be third parties who are doing it? probably better and more efficiently inefficient and more efficiently sorry than they could do it because they can you know they can 3d print it on site so you can have like a 3d company 3d print company in like ohio doing it for the americans and then you know in adelaide for the australians whereas battle you know the catalyst guys are going to have to get that made in china shipped out yada yada so i think like they're i think my I, my kind of feeling for them would be focus on the mechs and the vehicles as well because the vehicles are very bespoke to them. So like a demolisher looks like a demolisher and if somebody 3D prints that, potentially you can have them for license infringement. I don't, I don't, they're not very they're not a litigious company really, a catalyst that I can see. I mean, I think they've had a few problems recently but nothing, you know, they're not like certain other model companies who just go after everyone for everything. Uh, Catalyst has got a bit of a different ethos so I think they'll, but the mechs and the vehicles which is their real like IP but I think they'd probably just be happy leaving all the kind of terrain and infantry to like third party dealers um, I, do, I hope they do that as well because I think it's good if you can get those people within the community to take those on as projects um, in fact I'd like to see more of that like you don't really see enough like Battletech Kickstarters outside of Catalyst not that you'd call it Battletech because again that would probably be quite controversial but you could you know, like you you see them doing like the the files for for terrain and things like that, but you never get like a, oh we're doing a Kickstarter and we'll actually deliver you the terrain. You know, we'll print it all out and then send you it. Give us, I don't know, two hundred dollars on a Kickstarter or whatever, and we'll sort that out. I'd absolutely be up for that. Though there are a lot of like uh, individual companies who do a lot of very good terrain now, but I think generally speaking, this this Kickstarter is going to be focused. You know. As it should be on the on the max and the vehicles, uh, but it, expect some surprises. Anyway, I think that's the the key takeaway, and I think that the word of Blake thing is going to be. Well, I think it will shock people because the word of Blake's quite toxic. But I, and I'm not going to say I'm confident about my prediction. I'd probably give what I'm saying here like a sixty percent chance of happening. But I do hope they do it. I hope they do it as well. And this is going to sound a bit weird, given that I don't really play beyond the Fedcom Civil War. But I am willing to learn and I'm not so old and gripey that I'm just like, no, I won't have anything to do with it whatsoever. If they do a Word of Blake box set, it will force me to learn probably more about the Word of Blake than I want to know because I'll want to build the force pack and, and everything else. So I, again, I, I think it's it could be kind of a soft sell for us older players to get us back into the, you know, I'll get us progressing into the... Uh, into the narrative a bit more. And I think, I mean, I'll put it to you this way. I really, really hope that if they keep doing Kickstarters, which I think they will, I think they're going to go on for a few years. I'd hope that within like two or three Kickstarters, they start doing the Ilkhan era and just kind of bite the bullet on it and just say, right, well, now we're going into 3151. And that's it. You know, we have literally given you everything from the history of Battletech. So now we're going to concentrate on the new stuff that we can try to bring new players into. And if they do that, I think that's the that's the thing that will absolutely get me into the new era. At the moment, though, like it's difficult because obviously all the Kickstarter is focused so much on the era that era that I love anyway. I don't want to move from that. It's very safe ground for me, and I think a lot of people feel like that who are 
A, open-minded, but B, have got some kind of bias towards where they play, which I certainly do. Anyway, there you are. That's my little speculative piece um, for this week. Um, I'm recording this earlier in the week. It will go out on Friday. So I'm kind of desperately hoping they don't make any announcements between here and now. Otherwise, I'm going to have to go and delete this video. So if you never see this, that's why. But that's... No, that's not the case, is it? Because you are going to be seeing this. So if you do see this, they haven't announced anything just yet. Or certainly not by uh, by Thursday evening. Right, I'll stop it there anyway. So thank you very much for watching. And I'll hopefully catch you again next time.